What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to find the BPM and the key of any sample. So last week I showed you guys how to tune your 808s in Studio One 3. And this week I wanted to take it a step further and show you how I find the tempo and the key signature of any sample that I'm working with. Now, if you're a music producer, then chances are you've dealt with samples before. They're kind of like an integral part of not only hip hop, but also music production. Now, in the best case scenario, all our samples would come with a BPM and a key signature, making it easy for us to determine what chords and what notes to play. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. So we kind of have to find a workaround to make this happen. Now again, this is important because unless you know what key your sample is in, you're not going to know what notes to play, you're not going to know what chords to play, which is important when building your beat. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I find that plus the BPM on Studio One 3. Okay, so jumping into my software here, I actually have a sample that I pulled in from Splice. Now Splice actually does a really great job at telling you the BPM and the key signature, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna pretend we don't know that information. Now to find the BPM, there's two methods and whatever way you decide to do it, they're just as effective. Now the first way is to listen to the sample, to go down here where it says tempo, tap it out and see what you get. So let's try that now. So this is not perfect, but it gave me 85.63. So I'm gonna try 85 first and see what happens. So now that we have that set in, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my metronome and see if that matches up. Okay, so it does. Now another way to find out is if you zoom in, your sample should end on the five or at the end of the fourth bar. Um, ideally, we want all our samples to be four bar loops. That just makes it easy when it comes to structuring your beats. So along with the metronome that just verified it and uh, us checking manually, we see that in fact, this sample is an 85 BPM. So another way to do it is to use the manual method that I showed you guys and kind of go down here and click on the number where it says tempo and drag up and down. And the goal here is to make the end of your sample clip uh, end at the five or at the end of the four bar loop. So I'm gonna bring that down until that meets the five. And again, we're at 85 BPM. So if we zoom in, perfect. So if I were to loop this, it would actually be a perfect loop. So that's how you find the BPM of any sample. Two methods, so pick your poison, but now we're gonna find the key. So to find the key, it's really not that different from last week's method when we were tuning the 808. We're gonna go over to your mixer on the track that your sample is sitting in and we're gonna put in a tuner. Now, quick disclaimer, this method is not perfect and the difficulty really will depend on, on whatever sample you have. If it's something like this, where it's like a piano and it's playing notes at a decent pace, then I'm gonna be able to tell what the tuner is reading to me. But if it's something like an arpeggiator where the notes are being rapidly played, it might be a little bit harder to tell. So there's that. All right, so I have a tuner up here. I'm gonna pin it so it doesn't go anywhere and I'm gonna play this sample to see what notes we get. Okay, so on the tuner, I saw notes like F, A, G, C, and B. So with that information, we're gonna take that over to our first resource that I'm gonna be giving you guys. So go to your browser and you're gonna to go to a website called showscale.com. So basically what this is, it's a website with a piano roll. You type in the notes that you think your sample is in and it spits out a potential list of scales. Extremely handy. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and put in the notes that I saw on the tuner. So based on the notes that we put in, the website is telling me that it, this is either in C major or A minor. These two are what we call relative scales, and that's a totally different video, but pretty much they have the exact same notes. So what we're gonna pick is gonna depend on whatever the root note of our sample is, or pretty much whatever note gets repeated over and over again, whatever note that sample keeps coming back to. So to do that, it's quite simple. Go back to Studio One, and I'm actually gonna introduce you guys now to the second resource for today. This is called the MIDI Chord Analyzer. So I'm gonna bring that in here, and pretty much this will tell you whatever chords you're playing uh, on your keyboard. Now this is one of the things that I'm actually really jealous about over Logic users. They actually have this built in natively into their DAW. Whenever you play anything on your keyboard, 
it tells you on their dash what chord it might be or what note it is. We don't have that luxury, so we have to kind of resort to third-party VSTs, but it's all good. If you take a look at this thing, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is free and it is extremely useful, so that works for me. Now, initially, this is not gonna have any sound, and that's because we still have to route an instrument to it. So I actually brought in a piano, and I like to work with pianos because it lets me hear chords easier. But you're gonna go in here where it has a little arrow, go to channel one, drop down to where it says MIDI chord analyzer. And if you go back, you should be able to see the notes and the sound from the piano. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open the tuner for the sample. And what we're gonna do is go back and listen to see what note the sample keeps coming back to. Now to give you guys a, a bit of a shortcut, a little hack, Usually the root note of a scale is the name of that scale. So a C major scale's root note will be C and A minor scale's root note will be A. So we know that it's gonna be either one of those two notes, but we're gonna listen to find out. Okay, so there was a note that got repeated three times at the beginning of each measure with the exception of the last one. That note, as we just discussed, has to either be a C or an A. So let's find those. Uh, if you take a look here, this is my C. This is my A. So it's gonna be either one of those two things. So let's go ahead and play it again and see what happens. And there it is, it was actually an A, so that means that our key of this sample is A minor. All you have to do at this point is go back, double click to create a MIDI region on your uh, VST, the piano in this case, double click again to open it up. We're gonna go to the scale, hit A, and then hit A minor, or natural minor. Double click to get the keys, and that is exactly what you're gonna be playing. But that is it guys, that is how you find the key of a sample. It does require a few steps, but hopefully these two tools will make it a little bit easier for you guys. Now before we go, I wanna actually give you guys one more free resource, because so far we found the BPM of the sample, we found the key of the sample, but we don't know what chords go into that key. So I'm gonna have you guys go back into your browser, and this time go to a website called autochords.com. I've already filled this in, but pretty much this allows you to put in the key that you're working with, the instrument, and it spits out chord progression. So you have something like the main chord progression, you have alternatives, and then you also have all the chords uh, that are possible to be played in that key. Now the cool thing about this website is that you can actually hover over the chords and it tells you what notes they're being uh, used. So DFA is D minor, F is FAC, E minor is EGB, A minor is AVC, and so forth. Now from this point forward, you are gonna have to do a little bit of work because although you have the BPM, the key, and you know what chords are in that key, you still have to find what chord progressions fit with your sample. So you're gonna have to use these tools that I gave you, kind of play around and see what fits best for you. But hopefully these make your process just a little bit easier. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with someone who you think could use this information. I'm actually gonna be linking all the resources from today down in the description box. But again, thank you for your time. Subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you guys on the next one.